Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Magdalene Centre. Today I'm doing a report for the Sun's Transit through the sign of Aries, starting on the 20th of March and finishing on the 20th of April, and highlighting some of the key themes that will be taking place during this transit, but also important aspects to um, various planets as the Sun moves through Aries, so that we can understand some nuances or some of the key challenges that will arise along the way as we go through the Sun's transit through Aries. Now, in terms of the sign of Aries, it's the first sign of the zodiac. So we're looking at new beginnings here, and Aries is about is cardinal fire. So cardinal is about new directions or new beginnings, and fire is taking creative action. Now, through fire, we get two things: we get heat and we get light. Now, the heat here is very much aligned with the actions and desires of Aries. It's the fiery emotions, that eagerness, that assertiveness, that impulsiveness to take action and to pursue desires, whilst the light side of it brings the element of objectivity into place. So with Aries, ideally we're looking at trying to make sure that our actions are objective, that we have clear set goals so we know what it is that we want to achieve and we know what new beginnings we're looking to initiate in our lives in order to start a whole new cycle of growth for ourselves because this is a time of taking action. We've had the, um, la been wrapped up the last astrological cycle, we've had this period of Sun in Pisces to figure out what it is that we want to create in the next cycle through connecting with our dreams, connecting with our intuition. But now with the Sun as passage into Aries, this is a month of taking action, of making sure that we remain objective in the course of doing that, but making sure that any goals that we've um, set for ourselves we have some of the courage to face it. One of the key gifts of Aries is courage, because whenever new beginnings always involve facing the unknown, it doesn't matter how much research we do, how much knowledge we seek to gain on any given subject, when it comes to new beginnings, at some point we just have to bite the bullet, um, swallow any fear that we have, and take the action in order to initiate things. So Aries is that necessary impulse, that fiery courage required for us to take action and get the ball rolling. Because if we don't take action, no goal will ever manifest for ourselves. It will just be a pipe dream with no outlet or no creative outlet for it to manifest. So Aries is a time of taking action and making sure that um, we remain, obviously remain objective because with one of the shadow sides of Aries is impulsiveness and impatience and getting so bogged up we're trying to make things happen or pursuing immediate you know, gratification that we don't remain objective, we get impatient, we get impulsive and we end up wasting all that creative energy so a key part of Aries is learning to remain objective, it's remain, remembering what goals did we set, what actions are the wisest ones to take in order to make sure the you know, goal actually happens and will manifest for us over the you know, coming 12 months. So this is a time for us to all take actions, but the transit will feel different at different times because of the Sun's interaction with the other planets and Zodiac and a lot of this is going to be squares to Capricorn because Capricorn is very heavy with planets at the moment. We've got Mars there at the moment, we've got Saturn, we've got the Lilith um, which is like the Dark Moon and we have um, Pluto and so things are very top heavy here at the moment so it's a time where we need to be objective, we need to be careful um, and so I'll go through each aspect individually. So the first aspect that we will encounter will be on t um, exact on 24th. This is a square between the Sun and Mars. And with squares, they often symbolise conflict or struggle. Now, if we don't um, look, if we don't observe or go within ourselves to identify where this struggle is happening internally within our own subconscious then usually what we'll end up doing is we'll project um, one end of the square onto other people and end up engaging conflicts or drama with those people to try and resolve this internal tension within us. So part of the challenge is 
the sun represents our, our sense of our identity. It's the core, you know, sort of the creative energy, if you like. So Mars, on the other hand, is desire and action. It's the natural ruler of um, Aries. So this is a time that is very. It's, Mars is the natural ruler of the kinds of initiatives that the sun's through tran transiting Aries highlights to us. But with Mars in Capricorn, the desire and action function is being challenged to be objective. But the square between our actions and desires and a sense of identity can indicate a disconnect or conflict between what actions and desires we pursue and our sense of who we are. So they're not they may not be yeah, congruent or we may be challenged to observe where we engage in actions and desires that are not aligned with who we are. Now to overcome this it requires us to rise above egoic perception and have the courage to turn inwards and look at this behaviour within us and become more objective about it and understand where where is our action and desires being subverted by the ego, where are we shooting ourselves in the foot by engaging in actions which aren't aligned with the goals we set, aren't aligned with who we are and and often sabotage whatever goals we set for ourselves. So for us to figure out what's going on we need to understand what are the desires um, that are floating around in our minds and you know, that the ego is latching onto that are sabotaging things and learn to view it objectively and figure out okay what desires do we need to shed so that we can focus that action and desire function on the goals that are true to who we are and will bring greater um, self-empowerment and greater self um, development and growth in the long run but it requires us to be objective and have the courage to stop looking or blaming on other people and instead look within ourselves and figure out where are we struggling against um, perceived resistance from outside. There's actually our own internal resistance projected onto other people. Because the square between Aries and Capricorn often is often felt like the tension between the desire for personal autonomy and independence and the needs of wider society and the demands that we fulfil our duties society as a whole. So Mars is in Capricorn at the moment so actions and desires are being challenged to become more disciplined, more focused and more concentrated on making sure that we have integrity in what we're doing, our actions are disciplined and controlled and the desire function is tempered through perseverance and patience so it becomes devotion. Now on the 29th, the Sun then moves into a square, an exact square with Capricorn. And these aspects build up to these events, They're not, they don't just occur on that one day, so we generally feel the energy rising towards the aspect for about a week before and it wanes off a week after. With the Sun square to um, Saturn in Capricorn, this is the challenge between um, the sense of self-identity and the neat sense of limitation and restriction and the challenge of obstacles so it's shown because with Aries it's generally uninhibited or desire to um, do anything it wants to but with Saturn in his home on a Capricorn in particular this is not a time for being impulsive it's a time for um, developing dedication and devotion to a specific um, task or goal and with Saturn square to the Sun we're looking at the necessity of um, incorporating things like patience and discipline into our character it's learning to not become develop a hard exterior in the face of challenges or the face of obstacles to the point that we cut other people off from ourselves or become cut off it's necessary that we recognize um, the need for struggle, the need for um, challenges which push us to develop greater um, reserves of inner strength, of perseverance and patience. But if we continue to remain positive, we may tr um, rebel or um, try and buck up against authority. But again, this is what happens when we don't deal with it inside ourselves and we end up having 
our mind ends up projecting one side of the equation onto another person or an authority figure. So for us to resolve it, we have to look within ourselves and look where do we struggle with taking responsibility, where do we struggle with discipline, where do we struggle with patience, and how do we, what do we need to do in order to cultivate these um, qualities within us so that we have that necessary grit and determination to pursue our goals. Because one, one of the things that often happens when we pursue a goal is we reach a point where that initial enthusiasm and motivation naturally um, decreases or it drops a bit and if we're not careful we can end up giving up on a goal which may actually be really helpful for us. So the Sun square um, Saturn is an opportunity for us to develop that perseverance, to develop that resilience of spirit and recognise the necessity of um, having these obstacles in our lives to show us where are our weaknesses, where are the points where you know, we have a core weakness that will prevent us from achieving something or where do we struggle with perseverance, where do we have a tendency to give up in the face of obstacles and how can we develop greater perseverance to continue to pursue our goals in the face of these obstacles. Now the next aspect along um, is a full moon in Libra, so this is on the 31st so obviously there'll be a separate report um, for this, but this is the um, this particular aspect between the sun and the moon is obviously a time of reflection. It's a time of bringing balance between understanding the sense of self and understanding how we're interrelated with everything else around us. So we, whatever actions we're taking now, we need to have the broad picture in mind. We need to have the broader understanding that nothing happens in a vacuum, everything creates effects. Every action, air, which is a cause, Aries, creates a reaction or creates an you know, effect. So we all need to be mindful of or have in mind the bigger picture of understanding that what ac the actions we take will um, come back to us in one form or another. And the moon in Libra gives us that opportunity to reflect on how do our action, how do our rea actions reflect back to us, what are the consequences of the results we do and if for whatever reason we're not manifesting things in a good way or in a healthy way, the this is an opportunity to understand that it's important that we maintain an, uh, our own personal sense of self, our own sovereign identity for like or our own personal self identity but at the same time anything that we the moon and Libra also reflects back to us parts of ourselves that we may not have dealt with within the shadow but also reminds us that everything is interrelated as well we may be whole within ourselves if we've done um, work on ourselves but we're also naturally in relationship with everything around us and especially with the people so I don't, a lot of us would have heard the whole phrase that who we are is a reflection of our five you know, closest um, relationships obviously include this means things like friendships um, partners etc but the people that we hang around with the most are a key reflection of who we are as individuals because they're similar to us so the full moon asks us to reflect on how we're interconnecting with everything else, how do our relationships um, reflect on us, what quality our character is based on the kinds of people we hang around with and where do we need to strike, achieve that balance between self and other so that both parties in any relationship, whether it's romantic, platonic, um, friendship in general, but where do we how well do we strike a balance between the needs of both parties so we assert our own needs but we honour and respect the other person's needs and try to meet them as best we can. Now the next day we have um, Mercury is conjunct the Sun. This marks, Mercury um, would have been retrograde since the 23rd at this point as entirely within the sign of Aries. But when Mercury retrograde conjuncts the Sun this is a time where seed for new beginnings takes place. 
So during most of the Sun's transit through Aries, Mercury is retrograde at the same time. So energy for us may um, feel slow, we may not experience rapid forward progress the way we might like to, but Mercury retrograde is highlighting the need for us to remain aware of who we are and become more objective to understand how we fit into the wider things, what is what the big picture is, and making sure that the actions that we take are actually aligned with who we are. We're not if they've not been subverted by the ego into paths which then um, divert valuable energy into things which are non unconstructive and instead bring it back to the centre to evaluate okay what actions could we take instead because we may we often human beings are naturally creatures of habit we may all have our own certain ways of trying to achieve things based on what we know the Mercury retrograde in Aries is highlighting these things well hang on there could be a better way to achieve the same outcome the way we've been doing things may not necessarily be the um, best outcome or the best approach so how can we modify our actions or how can we allow our actions to become guided by wisdom rather than just blind impulse so that the actions we take are measured, they're controlled and they're focused solely on the goal that we've set for ourselves um, rather than being scattered all over the place so with this Mercury um, conjunct with Sun, it's like a seed is deposited in the um, subconscious mind and over the rest of the retrograde the seed starts to germinate and give us an idea of a new way of doing things or a new way of taking action, um, new desires um, that are more closely aligned with who we are. But it's important during this time that we, for most of this month, we need to um, remain slow to not obviously it's important to take action and push things forward we also need to remember when to go with the flow so Mercury retrograde is an opportunity for us to slow down and help us understand the difference between the two when is it a good time to push for something to happen and to take you know, constructive action towards it and when is it a time to um, take a step back and observe the flow to understand what is the next step along based on what wisdom is showing us rather than what we think is the right way to do things. On the 2nd of um, April the Sun is going to be um, exactly trying the North Node in Leo. So this is not this brings us an opportunity to because this North Node um, in Leo is asking us all to on the South or um, nurture the divine spark of creativity within every single one of us and become the best versions of ourselves because if we don't strive to become the best versions of ourselves we can't really help um, everyone else um, we can't if we don't help um, ourselves we don't strive to become the best versions of ourselves through having the courage to do um, things that, um, or having the courage to pursue our dreams having the um, courage to um, pursues things which other people may not understand and to develop self-confidence and um, self-belief so that when we have a you know, creative vision we have the courage and the um, drive to make it happen now with the Sun forming a trine um, to the North Node it gives us this opportunity to more readily identify with the objectives um, that the North Node is setting us all and to figure out how can we make them happen, how can we incorporate the lessons of the North Node into our goals, into our um, visions and um, dreams, how can we make them a reality and how can we learn to reconnect with that creative spark within us and become like a child again, I don't mean become childish, I mean have that wonder that um, kids naturally have that desire for play because play is, an, is necessary for us to try new things, to practice things in an environment where there's no um, consequences to it, as it were. It's, it gives us an opportunity to try new and wacky solutions and come up with ideas that we wouldn't necessarily normally you know, do, but 
we then try and create it, we make it happen, we use play to figure out new ways of doing things and um, we develop that connection to the um, spark within us rather than trying relying on the status quo, relying on other people to show us what to do it's having the willingness to look within us and um, recognise that we have to take action ourselves in order to make things happen in our lives we can't rely on other people to do it for us because everyone's wired differently no one has exactly the same mindset as ourselves so how can we expect that person to know exactly what is right um, for us um, now this doesn't mean that we become egotistic we need to make sure that we're aware of the um, big picture we're aware of how we're connected with everything else so we don't become big-headed and egos inflated but we do need to have um, the willingness to take creative action without necessarily knowing how things will um, pan out in the long run because only by shining our light and um, that we can illuminate other people and be a positive example to others because the strength of a group is only as strong as its weakest link so therefore surely it makes sense for us all to work on ourselves to become as strong connection as possible so that we can help our communities more easily without losing the sense of self, without um, giving up our um, personal um, sovereignty but by, by becoming the best versions of ourselves we can then help other people do the same, we can help other people develop their own um, capabilities so that group scenarios and communities become stronger as a result because all the members have been nurtured to become the best versions of themselves and figure out what can how can they use their own creative energy to help others now the next aspect we have is a square to um, Lilith now Lilith is about the repressed feminine it's anything that we repress or um, hide or reject within ourselves gets buried in the unconscious and it often gets twisted up within our shadow self and when Lilith goes through a sign she highlights that area that needs working on but Lilith also demands objectivity and becoming impersonal so the square to the sun here prompts us to depersonalize things to take a step back in terms of our perspective of things and to not take things personally and it's with the well, aspects between the Sun and Lilith when handled constructively and we behave in we depersonalize things so we view things from a more objective lens we're better able to help other people um, shine we're not but Sun Lilith is a combination it's not after people copying them um, it's about encouraging each person to shine in their own right but we have to overcome any tendency to take things personally first we have to rise above um, taking things personally rise above the ego's conditioning and become more objective and understand our own creative um, process better with Lilith and um, Capricorn um, one of the things that's being highlighted to us is where do we um, fear where do we have a fear of failure or where do we have a fear of being seen or where do we sabotage ourselves by not thinking we're worthy enough to pursue a specific goal and where do we need to relinquish these fears where do we where are we worried that shining our light will upset other people and where do we try and hide our light so Lilith in Capricorn is challenging us to become our authentic selves, to free, become aware of the shadow, to bring it to the surface so we can understand where do we have, why do we fear being our true selves, why, what scares us about being authentic um, in public situations and in the public sphere because the only way we can be true to ourselves is to learn to be authentic and to learn to be who we are wherever we are so we're not just wearing masks or um, compartmentalizing life we need to understand where do we fear what other people perceive about us and where do we hide our light as a result so this is a, um, this square aspect challenges us to become objective to see 
where do we hide our lights um, in our shadows? Where do we allow f um, fear of failure or fear of the people's perceptions of us to stop us from doing things and overcome them? The next key date is the 11th. This is when we have a square between the Sun and Pluto and an inconjunct between the Sun and Jupiter on the same day because Jupiter and um, Pluto will be in exact sextile at the same time. So the square between the Sun and Pluto represents a conflict we have around our relationship with power of um, transformation and um, sexuality and our relationship with control and this is a time where we may f experience power plays and interactions if we don't if we're not careful and we don't observe ourselves we don't look at our own because any conflict is basically this, the subconscious attempt to project one part of the um, issue outwards onto other people so that person then becomes a convenient hook for us to react against in order to understand what's going on but with Pluto it's about polarization it's about understanding or seeing these deeper desires these unconscious power drives and purifying them through polarizing them to a positive and negative camp and this usually is precipitated through some kind of crisis interaction but the more south aware we are and the more we understand how we operate the less likely this is going to cause a problem for us because the more we know ourselves the less likely we will engage in you know, control issues or try and seek power over other people because through knowing ourselves we learn to recognize that true power lies within us anyway so we're not going to become any better or any stronger or powerful by controlling other people so if we can face our own subconscious attachments, face our own dysfunctional um, thought patterns and behaviours and relink, shed the ones which are driven by the ego in order for us to um, purify ourselves, to rid ourselves of um, control drums or control dynamics, rid ourselves of any... because sometimes we may fear being um, powerful and we submit to other people instead. So this is a time where um, the weeks building up to it and obviously the week after this is a time where we may be challenged to observe our, our relationship with power and to understand that true power lies within ourselves but can, it can only be tapped into by having the courage to release all egoic um, tendencies which are destructive and based in fear in order to tap into the true power that lies hidden beneath um, all those layers of illusion that we cling to. And with the inconjunct between the Sun and Jupiter, this is a time where we may... F Jupiter and the Sun in the natural horoscope form a trine relationship with one another, so they interact with each other very smoothly. And they talk about the desire to expand the sense of self-identity, of understanding who we are in the wider context, who are we, in relationship with society, with the world around us, with the cosmos and how do we achieve an inclusive feeling of um, identity where we recognise it, we're interconnected with everything else and we start to understand that sense of oneness but with the in conjunction to Jupiter and Scorpio this is a time where we may struggle to understand this that these two drives me feel alienated but if we can overcome that sense of separation and identify or learn to see how we can grow or develop our self-understanding through expanding um, our awareness of our own unconscious minds, of delving deep into the subconscious mind to pull out the shadow desires, the sh um, shadow the fears and the shadow drives which um, undermine our well-being, undermine our sense of self and hijack our desires to become better versions of who we are then we can tap into the field of grace through the thing so one of the key elements of this will be learning to forgive ourselves where old dynamics come to the surface to make, make us aware of where we still engage in these power drives where we're still operating unconsciously because Scorpio is about making the unconscious conscious 
So the more we do this work and the more we have the courage to face those core fears, face um, those core power drives which um, undermine our well-being or undermine our um, relationships with people and instead achieve a greater understanding of the, our true depths so of connecting with that raw primal energy at the core of who we are and then sharing with it. So it's going through that fe the phoenix of you know, burning away um, the old self in order to rise anew as a um, wiser and more empowered version of ourselves. But like anything, we have to take the actions ourselves. This is not f none of what I've been talking about is forced upon us. How we interact with this is our choice. And if we choose to remain unconscious of it, then things will probably carry on um, repeating the way they have um, throughout our lives. It's only when we choose to become conscious of it and decide to change things that things can start happening in a different way. Now the last aspect is on the, tw um, the 18th, and this is when the Sun conjuncts Uranus. Now, just to put this into perspective, um, Uranus has been going through Aries for the past seven years, but it's going to be moving into Taurus later this year. Um, so this is the very last time that the Sun and Uranus will conjunct one another in Aries for about 77 years. Now, this conjunction is about understanding the greater depths of our consciousness, of, of understanding who we are, and understand the necessity of transforming our sense of self-identity through allowing in revelations about who we are to come through our intuition and show us where we need to um, change our self-perception, where we need to change what we're doing because what we've been doing so far isn't congruent with who we are. So with Uranus in Aries this has been all about awakening um, the desire for you know, transformation, awakening um, the willingness and courage to embrace an entrepreneurial attitude and to develop greater reserves of uh, resilience and greater degree of self-awareness. But again, it's down to each and every one of us to work on this ourselves. Just because Uranus is moving on into Aries doesn't mean the energy just goes completely. There'll always be, the residue will always remain behind for us to continue working with, but the active effort will move into Taurus. So during this period, it's important that we look within ourselves and understand who we are. We understand what transformation um, we can be, because Uranus can create that drive to try and change the world, but we can't change, force the external world to change to suit our own needs or suit our own agendas. Um, the only thing we can truly change is ourselves and through changing ourselves that sends out a new energy which can facilitate transformation in the outside world but if we don't do the work on the inside then the outside isn't going to change so that's the key thing with astrology it's not it doesn't control our external environment it doesn't force us to do anything it's highlighting what is going on within within us within the collective unconscious so that we can understand what is going on we can i recognize or understand who we are develop greater self-understanding greater self-awareness and um, become more conscious individuals because the more conscious we are the better choices we can make because we understand who we are we understand how our minds work we understand where we do things well, where things are still operating in the shadow, we need to transform. And this gives us the power to take charge of our lives, to become the best versions of ourselves, and to become an empowering influence um, for other people. Because through our, it's learning, it's doing things by example. I mean, it's all very well and good me talking you know, to the camera like this and outlining what various aspects are doing. But at the end of the day, if I'm not actually doing the work, then everything I'm saying is just words. So, what I'm, everything that's been said will only really occur if we have the courage to make the changes, to become aware of ourselves, to overcome the tendency to blind impulsiveness, and become objective in our actions and desires. So, uh, with the Sun's conjunction with Uranus, this is an opportunity for us to 
understand who we are at a um, deep level, of allowing intuition um, to guide us, to show us who we truly are and identify what changes we need to make within our lives in order to better reflect who we are and to honour that divine spark within us. And through becoming an example of this, through becoming that change agent, we, give, we serve as an invitation for other people to do the same thing, if they choose to. The one thing we need to be wary of with the conjunction between the Sun and Uranus is we need to make sure that we do not become egotistic, we do not get this idea that we're superior to other people and it's our job to save other people. We, we can't do that, we can only save ourselves, but we can provide assistance, we can help other people and we can provide a humble service to humanity, but we can't make the world change um, based on whatever revelations we see, we can only apply those insights into our own personal lives and allow that to send ripples outwards from us that may spread depending on how receptive other people are. But we must uh, remain humble, we must not allow arrogance to creep in or a sense of superiority because we know things that other people do. These insights are there for us to apply in our own personal lives so that we become better um, individuals make we develop a greater humanitarian streak and we understand the necessity of service um, but we don't become big headed in it we recognize each person is a spark unto themselves each person is a unique manifestation of the divine spark and it's each person's individual responsibility to become the best versions of ourselves so there's a lot to going on um, for the astrological month of Aries but it's a time of a lot of growth for us if we take it it's an opportunity for us to do a lot of transforming of the shadow of resolving internal conflicts that we may not be aware of until it's highlighted to us but if we use this transit wisely we can get new you know, goals started we can also become more objective with what we're doing become more patient develop greater perseverance and a greater willingness to kind of muck in and just take things um, steadily rather than trying to make things happen on our timing. Everything na has a natural timing in terms of how it unfolds, but we do, and our job is to initiate things who've taken those creative actions to begin with, but then letting the flow guide us, let intuition and wisdom show us the best way to make things happen and to remember to remain humble is the highest side of Aries is things like selfless leadership. It's the courage and um, leadership you know, qualities, but remembering to be selfless, to um, bring our actions under, under the control of the soul or the higher self, whatever um, words you choose or feel comfortable with, and making sure that it's guided by right action. So the actions we're taking, they're honest, they're careful, they're considerate, but they, they help us towards our particular goals and if they happen to inspire other people, fantastic. But if not, each to their own. We're all wired differently and it's important that we remember that so we don't try to force our own ideas on other people. We expect that each person has their own way of viewing things. Whether we agree with it or not, by the by, it doesn't matter. What other people um, think or how they choose to live their lives has no real bearing on us if we don't have any um, direct um, connection with that person or anything like that. So part of this month of Aries is about taking the action and make, start getting the ball rolling so that our goals have a chance to manifest, so that whatever seeds we've planted have a fighting chance of surviving and putting the roots down and releasing the f those first couple of leaves. But um, if we don't, take these actions, the new seeds won't um, manifest, we won't achieve any new goals in that respect, and we won't be yeah, using the energy as best as our ability. Now one thing I have um, forgotten is on the 16th we have the new moon in Aries, so this is a good time for setting new goals in terms of trying to achieve the highest manifestations of Aries in our, in our lives, so it's looking at how can we create, what new beginnings we want to create for ourselves, where can we become or develop greater autonomy and greater um, sense of independence? But it's also an opportunity to look at setting goals in terms of releasing 
Zip problems like self absorption, um, impatience, um, insensitivity, and making sure that whatever actions were taken are well thought out, they're considered, and they're guided by wisdom rather than um, blind impulse and fear. So, obviously, as I said, for the full moon, there will be a video specifically dedicated to this, but it's worth mentioning it now so that we know what's going on um, through the month of Aries. So there's a lot for us to take on board. There'll be many um, challenges, but these challenges are opportunities for growth to become stronger individuals of developing greater resilience so that we're not, we don't just give up at the first hurdle. And we also understand the wisdom of needing to take things slowly or doing things in a disciplined way and being patient and you know, careful and considered in what we're doing. So may the month of Aries, um, whilst the sun's going through the sign, bring many new beginnings, a lot of growth, and opportunities for self-empowerment, and many opportunities to become better versions of who we already are. So take care, may this be a month of wonderful growth, and many new and exciting beginnings.